Hi, it's Ricky from Communication Generation, and today we're going to look at uh, image retouching, retouching old vintage photographs. And I've got an old photo here that's looking a bit daggy, and we're going to fix it up. My wife's laughing because I said daggy, and half the world audience won't understand. H have a look at some of these dodgy areas. There's sort of coffee stains on it and things like that. Half the face is missing over here. And we're going to look at some of the tools that you can use in GIMP, open source software, to retouch this image. Then I've used control and scroll to come in a little bit here. I'm only going to choose a random spot to start with. Let's have a look at her arm. I'll use this. If I have the, uh, the layer selected over here on the left, on the right I should say, then if I click the space bar, it'll go on and off this little item visibility, then I'll have to, I'm actually going to click my uh, heel source tool, which is the one with the little band-aids, and you can follow along with what I'm doing down the bottom here. You can see what tool I'm using. Then I'm going to go and click that, and that means I can now scroll a little bit more easily. If I click on the image, and then I can, holding my space bar, I can then drag my mouse where I want to go. Then I'm going to, let's have a look at this spot on her arm and some of these cracks down here. And we'll use the heal tool to simply heal a few of these. And let's look at this area here. Normally we might work a bit more systematically and go from one side of the image to the other. But for this exercise, I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to, all right. I'm going to like work on this a little bit. My computer's actually jamming up a little running the recording software as well. And control and control and I think it's all right. Then it's it's confused whether I'm using the image processing or GIMP. But you won't have that problem because you're not recording. Then click. I've got there's a few settings here. None uh, for the uh, the tool options here for the heel tool. There's like none aligned registered or fixed and that's for another video but for today I'm going to use none and I've got a little brush here and I'm going to click over here set my source by control clicking and it's a wiggly motion and it's getting a like a place very similar and what the hill the heel tool will do, will it'll merge some of this and some of that. Then some, if some places are a little more extremely blotted out, like the star color differences and things like that, you can actually opt for the clone stamp tool and you'll use it the same way. So set your source and I have it on alignment none as well. And I can paint in a little bit there. Um, back to the heel tool. Now there's a shadow down here, then we want to set our source. Like and go with the shadow pretty close. And if I go with the shadow like this, the shadow is distributing evenly and I have and I'm using a brush, which is one that I made. It's a hardness 50 then it has quite soft edges. But at the moment, I'm using that one. I'll go and do this little bit here as well. And then we can simply go around and fill in some of these cracks like this. And say if we did over here, we'd follow the shadows here and sort of and like sort of follow the shadows. A little bit of brushing up and down. I could fix that. Then that's the heel tool. Um, something a little more complex while we're using the heel tool. We could also say, this is not really straight, but say this is a straight line that we wanted to fix. Then we could set our source and change it from fix to align or something like that. And then click and shift and it'll run 
Now I clicked shift when I made the second the second click down here further. And then it would it followed that line along. And using space and moving my mouse with my finger or thumb on space, we might work on some of these bits over here for a working example. And you can see over here on the left, I can change my brush size to a size that um, sort of suits the canvas, suits the size of this crack a little bit bigger. We don't want to go, to, we want to keep as much of the original as we can there. And I'm changing the size using the brackets. And that's a shortcut you can use for changing your brush size where you don't have to mess over here where it's quite fiddly. And then control click. And um, I, sometimes I'll swirl it around a little bit. I left a little artifact there. Go back and clean that up. All right. Now that's, that's how I do it. And I might use follow the shadows here. You can even use different size brushes if you're um, really concerned about these edges. But yeah, I'm following. And you know you can you can control usually I control and scroll but to go in and out I guess there is like little zoom buttons as well there's little scrolls here on the bottom if for some reason yours doesn't scroll and I guess you could also change the percentage to go in and out I'm sure there's other ways as well but control click I'm used to pressing control. Yep, then we could keep going on and on. And we could, uh, I'm going to use this down here to make the image a bit bigger. And we could even, for more detail, go in even down to almost pixel level and you know, make our brush fit these, depending how much perfection we are looking for in our image. But we could sort of even get down to that level. And then when you go out, of course, it's going to look much better. Not such a small area. It's not going to make a big difference. So then this is a picture we've been working on. We, um, if I can get back out to 100%, or maybe 33%, or it's quite a large image, 18%. Now let's have a look at this image. There's some really sort of degraded areas. There's a, there a coffee stain over here on this face. And I'll show you some of the differences and how we, how we work through them. This is It's not quite the earliest image, but you can see half this woman's face is missing. And what we had to actually do is go and copy this and then pay, we put this on, I took a sample of this face, put it on a new, uh, a new layer, and then reversed it. And I'll see if I can see if I have that layer here. I'll turn off this other layer. Then I copied, then I reversed it. There's a little flip button over here, flipped it over the other side, and I used that part to create the other side of a face. And sometimes you have to like think out of the box, you know, I was actually considering if I would actually, a lot of this guy's nose was missing, and I think that's on another, another backup of this image. But what I had to do was, I think, use somebody else, a little bit of somebody else's nose to recreate his nose. And there's things like that you can do. And um, I usually, these aren't labeled well, but I usually save, uh, I save the layer up here in layers as I go or um, make a layer, duplicate the layer, which is also down here on the layers menu. You can duplicate the layer and keep new layers popping up. It's probably not the ideal way to work as far as the textbook way goes, but I find it works very well and I have backup copies and 
say when I wanted to layer with this damaged part in with the whole layer, and I wanted a new layer with everything I saw, then you can go here to layers and uh, new from visible. Then there are only a few of the tips I had with this image. Um, give you a quick look at that again. That's what. It's Have a look. Uh, well, if we go from there to the, actually that's not the best one. Yeah. Then you can see that. I'll, I'll switch this on and off a few times to see the difference. See if there's anything else we can talk about. Oh yeah, the sky. I didn't like that effect. I same again with here with the roof of the house. I think there was a hole in the roof. This is not using the. Uh, this is an earlier version or something. Because there was actually a hole in the roof of this house we had to patch up. In the sky here, there's all these brown marks in the sky. You can't see them in this version either, but we took a sample using this eyedropper tool. Where's my eyedropper tool here? And then we put that, actually it's jamming up because I'm using this other software, but what you can do is take a sample of the eye and then paint it on. And we grabbed our paintbrush and we painted on. Sorry, I'm working on the wrong layer. I'm probably working on the wrong layer. Yeah, then. Yeah, then grab a sample using the eyedropper tool and it'll populate this color here. And then you can choose your brush and um, paint a nice smooth color if that's what you're looking for. A few tips on restorations using GIMP. It's totally possible and you can get some really good effects and some good finished products. And drop into communicationgeneration.com and we'll have more tips and tricks all the time.